Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to share this puzzle with you today. This is actually a puzzle that I've been really excited to do. I had it on my puzzle to-do list, but I didn't think I would be able to do it this quickly. As a lot of you know, right now it's really hard to find good puzzles because with everyone being in quarantine, a lot of people have gone out and started snatching up puzzles, which I'm excited that there's a lot more people puzzling, but the shelves have been pretty empty. Also, I think with shipping, um, puzzles just haven't been making it to their destinations. Well, my husband happened to go into World Market the other day and he saw a stack of puzzles and he sent me a picture of puzzles and I actually missed this puzzle. Do you ever have like a lot of pictures come in at once and you end up missing um, some of the pictures because they download in a different order or something. Well, that happened to me, but I was looking at a picture of a Ravensburger puzzle and I saw on the shelf below the Ravensburger puzzle a stack of Cobble Hill puzzles. And I thought he hadn't sent me those pictures. And so I texted him back after he'd already picked out some Ravensburger ones for me. And I said, hey, is that a stack of Cobble Hill? Go back and see what those Cobble Hill ones. And he was like, uh, I already sent you those pictures and I kind of scrolled back up and he had he sent me the pictures and included in those pictures was actually this puzzle Okay, it's a cobble hill puzzle. It's called buttons and I had made a list a few weeks back of a lot of major brands or not even just major brands a lot of puzzle brands and I went through the websites and I found puzzles that I was really excited to do and I put this puzzle on my spreadsheet under cobble hill and I put it as very excited because I saw this puzzle and as soon as I saw it I knew I wanted to do it. I just didn't think I would have access to it so quickly uh, because the websites are down and I hadn't been able to find good puzzles in a long time. So anyway, let me jump into what I have to say about this puzzle because uh, I have a lot to say about this puzzle. Uh, it was pretty exciting. When I saw this puzzle, it actually got me really interested in the artist. And the reason is a lot of puzzles that I do are maybe pick pictures or paintings that are clearly a picture of an object or a painting of an object um, something like that that's been designed and it's clear who the artist is well for this one with it being buttons i was curious about the artist so i decided to do some research and just fyi uh, the way this artist works they have a lot of graphic designs and i feel like graphic designs on the internet are probably stolen all the time and reused without artist permission so i'm going to avoid using um, too many images unless they're just for promotion of this artist's work. His name is David Olenek, I think I'm saying that correctly, and I read a few articles and I watched a couple videos and I'll link everything down below so that you can go look at it yourself, um, but I just think he seemed like an interesting artist so I just wanted to find out some more about him. So as you can see he makes a lot of punny graphic designs uh, within his art and you can find his art on things like t-shirts, um, rugs, uh, I saw some cutting boards, which I thought was neat, a lot of magnets, also bottles. It seems like almost anything you can get his artwork done on. And it seems like he has a really cool process. He has a process of like input days and output days. And there was a third day. Let me look. I wrote it down. Oh, he called them maintenance days. And so there was an article where he went and talked about his whole process. So if you're interested in like his artist process, I'll link that article down below. The other thing that I was super interested in was just finding out his background a little bit. So it seems like there's not a lot about him on the internet, which tells me that he's probably a private person. So I'm not going to dig too deep because if people are trying to be private and not put everything out there, then I'm not going to dig deep and find everything about them. Um, but from what I can tell, just from the articles that I'm going to list below that are shared and are public and interviews that he did, it seems like he started working in fashion and I don't know what they mean by that. I think assumptions can be made that it's graphic design, but there were a lot of articles, sorry my phone's going off, there were a lot of articles, not a lot of articles, the articles that I read said that he previously worked in fashion. After he worked in fashion, he was going to take a few months to figure out what he wanted to do next. Well during that time, he started creating and designing shirts for a website called, let me get it right, Threadless. He was working for Threadless, not working for them, but he was just designing. You can design shirts and it seems like you can submit them. And he started doing that and his shirts were obviously successful. I mean, you've seen the puzzle, his artwork is awesome. And it's it really is conducive to that type of a, an item. It's really quick, it's really punny, it's nice to put on a shirt. And so Threadless noticed that and it seems like he's had like repeat business in that area. So it seems like he went from, you know, doing fashion to then he was doing Threadless, which is also kind of fashion. He went from there to working with another shirt company. I don't know if they just do shirts, but you can upload your artwork there as well. Um, Society6, and he had, a, he was designing shirts there as well. 
So clearly, you know, his art is really well done. It really, you know, is conducive to that type of material. And so he was working with, you know, Threadless and then Society6. And it seems like after that, I didn't like dig super deep and find out, I don't know exactly when his artwork went from being on just shirts to being on other items, but I'm not surprised. He has magnets, he has um, cups, and I guess I keep saying he has, but he's kind of one of those graphic design artists that his material is, is given, not given out, but he, what would the word be? He markets it or he sells it, or basically companies will use his artwork on things like magnets and cups and shirts, and you know he's paid for his work in that way, and obviously puzzles. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link down below um, his Instagram because it's really, you know, a well done Instagram. He's really funny. So if you want to see a lot of his designs, they're there. Uh, what I really want to get, and I don't know where I can find them. I'll link it if I can. There's a picture of it. Is I want some of the, he does these little magnets. I keep saying he does, but someone has made his artwork into little magnets. And I saw it in one of the videos and I think it was actually a video of him in a grocery store actually putting some of the magnets around. If I, if I find a clip from that video again, I'll share that clip but I can't find those magnets anywhere I've seen a lot of the larger rectangular magnets which are really cool and I have some of that size not of his artwork but just other magnets on my fridge and so I might get some of those um, I think I could find those on Amazon I saw it in a few different places but I really like those round little magnets and so I did a Google search I wasn't able to find them um, but I will keep looking because I just thought those seemed like fun little magnets to have and if I find them, I'm going to get some. I'm wondering though if I can only get them in a physical store because it seems like a lot of his material is used in like magnets and things in like gift shops and it's like commercialized in that way and so maybe that would be the only place to find it. But if I find some, I will. The other thing is, it, it's not as obvious from the puzzle, but he actually has a lot of, like I guess you could say like more harsh language or cursing in his artwork than is represented on the puzzle. In the puzzle, I think the most like curse word one, I guess we could say, is it says is the one with the T that says calm the hell down. And that's like the most. But he was quoted and let me get it right, that he said someone like said to describe his artwork and he described his style as inspired by his O C D but also well placed F bombs. And I thought that was uh I think it seems like he knows himself very well. Um, there's a lot of um, of his art with cats that I think I might, let's see if I can get some of that. You see in my videos, we love cats around here. And so I think that that would be, that would work well in our home. So if I find those circle magnets with some of the cat art on it, that is what I will be purchasing if I find it. If not, I might just have to go with the rectangular magnets. Now on another note, so switching from just me researching his life, which I think is going to be something I look forward to doing in the future. I really am inspired by the art on puzzles, especially particular puzzles where the art is clearly thought through. And I think it's going to be a great way for me to learn more about the art world and about artists in general and just giving respect to artists in a way that I think I haven't before. I think art is something that is easy to think that it just happened. So for example, with this puzzle at first, in my mind, I had thought that the puzzle was just created by somebody at Cobble Hill. I was like, okay, someone at Cobble Hill found these buttons and took a picture. Not thinking about that would probably be a major copyright issue anyway, or just thinking maybe they designed it themselves. I wasn't sure. I actually got really curious. And so if you go to, I'll link his website, obviously I'm linking everything down below. If you go to his website, he has a place where you can email him, the artist. So I sent an email to the artist and thank you if you ever see this video i really appreciate that you responded to me so quickly i i really was curious about how the puzzle came to be and so i just emailed him asking because in my mind there's a few scenarios that could have happened either cobble hill uh, found these buttons and took a picture or cobble hill had someone at their you know business that designed it they hired a designer i, I wasn't sure but i saw that he was the artist and so then my question was did he take a picture of art that was already existing? Did he design the whole image? Is it not even a photograph? Because sometimes art is done so well these days you can't even tell something's not even a photograph. But anyway, he got back to me. And so just for those of us who are interested in puzzles, what happened was, and to me this is very exciting. So I don't know who reached out to who. I'm assuming Cobble Hill reached out to him. That makes the most sense. I don't know if, I don't think he answered that. And I don't think I asked that, but they had a connection. Cobble Hill and this artist 
had a connection together they talked about what they would do and it turns out they actually went through multiple different designs before they got to buttons and so they had considered he told me magnets he told me um, mugs and I know for sure he said patches because I thought oh patches that would be a really cool puzzle to do so Cobble Hill if you want to do round two um, hopefully the sales are really high I don't know but I think it's a beautiful puzzle so I'm assuming they are uh, maybe we can do round two with Mr. Olenek because I loved this puzzle it was wonderful I would buy a patches puzzle I think they went with a good choice though buttons are good but anyway what he told me was they went back and forth on design to figure out what item they would do and then the art was created into the physical buttons and so some of them he said he had to redesign a little bit just so that they would fit well on a circular button so they talked back and forth about what they would do he does he does graphic design he's not a photographer and so since cobble hill is used to f photographing puzzles then they have people who do that cobble hill went ahead and did the actual photography of the buttons but then the artist was able to approve the final product and so that is kind of how the puzzle came to be and so I was really interested just to hear that background. I am curious though and this is just someone who's not an artist thinking out loud about artistic process and just art in general. So I know that photographers are artists and if you take a picture of something that is your art and so I'm curious and I don't have an answer I'm this is just a curiosity how is it that he would be the only artist that is listed and then wouldn't the photographer also be an artist but maybe not because maybe if the the photographer it just works at cobble hill then they're just cobble hill like the entity and they get credit through it being their puzzle and they just took the picture so and i'm curious about this only because i know that with some of their other collections i know they had the colors collection i know that there was artists who set up a lot of those collages I think it was one artist I'm don't quote me on that this is just my memory I saw a video once and took the pictures but I don't know if that artist actually took the picture or just set up the set up the items anyway I'm not trying to get this video to be too long I just am very interested in the backside of puzzle creation and I'm glad that I have a tiny little insight about how this one was created because I think it's a beautiful puzzle and obviously I am now introduced to a new artist which I'm very excited about so if anyone knows where I can find those little magnets let me know if it's an online store that's awesome because then I could maybe get them shipped to me um, if it's a physical store let me know where it is maybe I need to take a trip I just think those little magnets were so cute so I think that's everything I wanted to say yeah so let's move on to the time lapse then thanks guys
This was also the first time I've gotten a puzzle with a bonus piece. I kept looking at the puzzle trying to see if I forgot to put a piece in. Eventually I found the twin piece and I was able to exchange the piece and it was like piece for piece. So if anyone finds that they're missing this exact piece, let me know and we can work out an exchange. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this puzzle video and I was able to get a lot of puzzles on the same day that I got this puzzle and I had an online order come in. So I have a lot of puzzles to do over the next few weeks. So let me know what you want to see next and I'll talk to you later. Bye.